Hello friends, this is Scott, and this is Monday, October 28th, and I backed out the hobby farm after being gone for a few days, and here's Coquette uh, in the chicken pen and walking into the house, and they're doing their job, it looks like. They're they're checking for mice, and, uh, and I haven't seen a mouse uh, since I moved all the compost stuff, so yeah, they must be doing their job, and uh, yeah, I'm glad I got all that stuff moved out of the way so that these cats have a fighting chance. This time, no luck. Uh, Coquette did not find anything in the house, but I am spending a lot of time petting these cats down here by the chicken coop because I want them to hang out down here, so yeah, there's Theo and Coquette, and they also like to hang out with me on the back deck when I'm having a cup of coffee in the morning, and, and I end up with three cats on my lap, so yeah, I'd like them to have them down here a little bit more than just you know, give me a little peace on the deck, but it is what it is. So today's Subject matter is that we finally had our first killing frost in the last couple days, so approximately around maybe the 25th, 26th of October. So again, the earliest it could have probably froze was around September 12th before I even had a ripe tomato, but uh, we made it, you know, a long, lot longer. We made it a whole other month and a few week or so, and uh, I wish I would have been down here to cover these plants because they'd probably still be alive, but... I wasn't here, and uh, the frost finally got them, and uh, we got lots of tomatoes still on the plant. So, and I only had eight full-size tomatoes, and I still had you know, hundreds and hundreds of tomatoes. But taking a quick look at what else is in the garden, uh, left or dead, there's the squash, the zucchini, and the crickneck are dead. The subject of my next video is the picking the rest of the potatoes, and they, they're looking okay. Didn't, the frost didn't kill them, but uh, I'll be picking those in the next day or so. And the blackberries I just planted are looking great, all mulched in. And looking into the uh, side yard, uh, my wax beans and my hard beans uh, are all dead, it looks like. And I need to come in here and I need to pick these hard beans. Uh, there's not enough here to harvest and eat. I'm just going to harvest them, dry the seed, save it, and I'll probably have enough to plant a new bed next year. So maybe next year I can have enough. We'll see how many I get out of that. Sweet potatoes there didn't do a whole lot. Uh, but they're dead. They're one of the plants that die the quickest when it, when it when there's a frost. And there's my green beans. And I wish I would have had a chance to pick one more picking of beans, but I did not. So, yeah, they're, they're toast. And the strawberries are fine. And, uh, yeah, there's the fourth cat. There's Willow. So I startled Willow. And uh, Willow's friendly. I get a pet Willow, but I must have scared her or scared him. I'm not sure. I think it's a big tom cat. But uh, he'll hop the fence and get out of here. But uh, there's another Siamese cat and a black cat that are also frequenting the garage that I see. And, uh, yeah, they're eating lots of food. So Anyway, my one spaghetti squash didn't make it or to ripening, so it's going to go to the cows. And uh, the garlic's coming up. The kale, you know, the frost doesn't really hurt the kale, at least the first light frost. That's still plenty there. And I've been pulling a couple of plants, and I think I had six, and I've given three to the cows. Uh, I feel bad, but uh, we still have the enemy. Yeah, again, late October, and we still have a grasshopper that survives. So it must have been well insulated in that kale. Uh, but yeah, there's still, there's still pests around here. Not too many, though. No longer a problem. Now, the broccoli that I left in, I've been pulling some of the plants and feeding them either the cows or the chickens, but there's, a, there's some, still some broccoli to eat. And a volunteer pumpkin or squash or whatever it was did not make it through this last frost. And again, back to look at the crookneck and the zucchini. With the chickens out playing in the garden, they didn't make it. So, uh, and the tomatillos there are also gone. There's a few I can pick out of there probably and save the tomatillos, but we'll see. I might make one more batch of salsa. But I was fortunate to be able to make quite a bit of, freeze a lot of tomatoes and make a few bags of salsa for winter. But again, I like to pet the cats down here so that they hang out and they have a little spot behind the coop to check out for mice. And uh, they seem to be doing their job. They're on, they're on patrol. So Coquette is... Uh, Seems to be the most active when it comes to checking for mice. So, yeah, I haven't seen any of them catch one yet, but again, I haven't seen a mouse since I uh, got those compost bins uh, moved out of there. So, but back to today's subject matter is cleaning up the garden. And uh, those are the peppers and the eggplants. And uh, anything that I have that's dried out or dead that, that I think the cows can eat, I'll go ahead and, and give it to them. So, you see me chucking those over the fence. And, uh, you yeah, know, they enjoyed a little bit of the treats uh, that I threw over the fence. I did throw the hot peppers over there, too, so you know, I don't know if they have the same reactions to hot peppers. Uh, the, the water tank was, was gone pretty quick, so maybe they do. <laughs> so anyway, but uh, yeah, they seem to like to eat all the stuff and probably stuff they don't they should be eating, but I throw it in the compost bin, and because it's right up against the fence, they get in there and they eat what they want. So Look at all those tomatoes, though. 
I had, you know, tons of tomatoes. Again, only eight plants, and I had so many tomatoes. But I wish we could have had another couple weeks because I would have had a whole bunch more, but yeah. So I'm trying to pull these plants out, and I didn't bring my cutters out from the garage, and I'm realizing that that was a mistake. So yeah, I got to go get the cutters. And I'm just going to prune these out of these cages. Now, these are the really good metal cages. So if you're not into a lot of heavy pruning and you're not into staking your tomatoes, you just kind of want to plant them and let them go, these are the cages that I recommend you get. These are heavy duty. I've had these for 10 plus years, and they look as good as, you know, the, probably the day I bought them. And uh, they're just a really sturdy cage, not like those little cheapos that I used to use at the school garden. Uh, you know, obviously they cost a little bit of money. I don't remember what how much they are, but, again, it's a good investment because they, they're not going anywhere. They just... Uh, they just keep on, keep on giving. <laughs> so, yeah, but just got to get all these plants cut out of the cages. And I'm, I'm finding a few tomatoes down deep in the plants. Uh, and again, when the frost hits, it's usually the top parts of the plants. And anything down deep, you can, might be able to find a few that you can keep. And, uh, yeah, I'm not going to pick too many of the green ones because they're, they're going to rot before they ever uh, ripen on the counter. But I did pick five here. And uh, those are probably salvageable. We'll see if the green ones are. And I did find a couple more green ones on this plant as I'm pulling it out. And, but they're on the very top, and I decided to give it a try, and I kept them, put them on the wood there to pick them up later, but that was probably a mistake because, yeah, they got froze. So, again, if you want to try to save any, look down deep because that's where the big ones are probably at hiding anyway. So, But, again, this takes a few minutes to get through all this, and you know, I made progress. I was able to get some of these cages out of here. And uh, just amazing, again, eight Full-size tomato plants, one cherry tomato, and uh, yeah, this was this place did really good. I mean, I'm really really happy. And again, I only gave them one scoop of my homemade uh, in-ground compost from my compost bin in Salt Lake, and that's the only fertility they had, other than the uh, screen dirt from the big pile of dirt. And I'm kind of finding out that that big pile of dirt is pretty good dirt because I think it has lots of minerals in it. It's kind of a powdery clayish kind of stuff. And uh, it must have quite a bit of stuff in there that the plants like because uh, it seems like everything in my garden has done really well, even with the insect pressure we had this year. So here's a look at all the plants that I've got all knocked down and removed from the cages. I have 10 cages, and so one plant didn't make it. So I had, again, eight full-size, one, one cherry, and then one that wasn't in use this year. So so I just got the wheelbarrow out. I'm just going to cut these into smaller pieces and... So it's better to cut your vines into as small pieces as you can so that uh, they rot quicker, but I was kind of in a hurry, and so, yeah, I just did a little bit, and I'm figuring the cows are going to reach over there and grab them anyway and munch on what they want. So, again, tomatoes are probably not the healthiest thing for cattle, but uh, they'll eat what they want to eat. So look at the root structure on these tomatoes. Uh, yeah, they uh, they did well. They spread out. So, yep, the soil was fertile enough, and it should all only be getting better. And uh, there's a look at all the loose tomatoes that I have on the ground that I got to pick up and give them to the chickens. And uh, again, there's lots of tomatoes. Again, the plants themselves had tons still that I threw in the compost. But uh, yeah, there's a lot of a lot of tomatoes there. Got a full one bin on the compost. And again, that's where the cows like to reach in there. So they'll be over here munching on uh, on some of those tomatoes or whatever else they they seem to like. So yeah, there's the ones going to the chickens. And uh, there's a lot there. So. Again, with three chickens, that's going to last them a, you know, quite a while if they ever get to that. Well, I took the rake out, and I'm just going to level this area. Now, it would be nice to get into you know, doing some cover crops, but I haven't really explored that too much because it's kind of a pain to get rid of them in the spring. But you always want to cover your soil, and, and this year I have the advantage of getting those 20-plus cubic yards of, of the good wood chips from the tree service company. And so I got the wheelbarrow back over there with the shovel, and, and I loaded up, I think it was about 10 wheelbarrows. So here's a view of number one. I'm not going to show you all of them. I'll just show you how it looks when it's all, all 10 or, or filled up in there. Again, nothing fancy, but it does clean it up a little bit, and, and those, uh, those wood chips will, again, suppress weeds, retain moisture, provide fertility over time, and insulate the bugs and everything in the soil. So that's a good, it's a good thing to cover your soil. I think I will get into a little bit of cover cropping, though. i got to do a little more research on that because uh, that's something I've never really got into because uh, they just become weeds in the spring, and I've got enough weeds. But here's a look at how, many, how much of the wood chips are gone after all that, uh, those 10 wheelbarrows. So, yeah, we've still got quite a bit, and I hope I have enough. Here's a look at all the tomatoes I have on the counter, and I'll be doing another video showing process of the rest of those when they're ready, but I've got another batch there probably to be able to do. Well, thanks for watching this video. If you like what you see, please hit that subscribe button, share it with your friends, and uh, hit that like button. I can use your help growing this channel. Thank you.